Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my full Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 5 video. There are a bunch of Easter eggs, references. They finally revealed who the Sith Master was, confirming my theory. Don't worry, we'll get into that too, because they definitely wanted you to guess that it was a particular character. But the funny thing is that some people thought that it was so obvious that it had to be a misdirect, but I think that's just assuming too much of the show. Like, the show isn't trying to be that smart. Like, they're not trying to play four-dimensional chess. Like, you're meant to be able to follow pretty easily, and it was always going to be a character that we'd been seeing this whole time already. But overall, the episode, I think, was a big improvement from the previous episodes. Like, we finally got some actual action, and they're finally pushing into the actual Sith-based plot that we were promised at the beginning of the show. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. The episode title was Night, confirming my other theory too, because episode 4 was called Day, and they've been doing this juxtaposition of the two different titles for most of the episodes, like a title to refer to May's storyline and a title to refer to Osha's storyline. So the whole metaphor with 4 to 5 was Day to Night, like Jedi to Sith, like we're pushing into the Sith-based plot, like I said. And now it kind of seems like they flip-flopped and we might see Osha slowly turning dark. There were a lot of theories about that back during episode one, like right after episode one aired, people were like, maybe Osha will be the one to go dark by the end of the series and she'll become the titular acolyte. Speaking of which, Chimer went full meme during the episode. He said the name of the show inside the show. I want a pupil, an acolyte. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. The actual opening scene starts right after the end of episode 4 with Osha's perspective having just been forced pushed away by the Sith Master, revealed to be Chimere, like I said, confirming my theory. I think most people had the same theory, like right after episode 2 I was like, you know what, it's probably gonna be Chimere, like he's just too shifty. The perspectives we saw in the trailers, the fact that Chimere was reciting a lot of the same dialogue that the Sith Master was reciting at the end of episode 1, like it just seemed like it was too obvious. She sees the dead body of one of the red shirt characters that was killed by the Sith Master. Notice the pattern of the red dirt on the ground too. It makes it look like a giant red Sith hand is in the hand of the Sith reaching out. She hears and sees Chimere fighting the Jedi with his red Sith lightsaber. He's seemingly way more powerful than most of them, but a lot of these Jedi are meant to be red shirts. RIP to all of them, now it kind of makes sense why they spent so much time during episode 4 going back to Coruscant because it felt like a big tonal shift, like that really stopped the episode short in its tracks. It was so they could pick up all these red shirts so that Chimer could kill them during the episode. Couple cool lightsaber combat moments during this too. Love the way that he disables their lightsabers and they show them malfunctioning with him trying to reignite them. This happens during a couple different lightsaber fights. It's possible his armor, like his helmet, the bracers that he's wearing, are made of catorsis, just because that has the ability to short out lightsabers like this, and it's lightsaber resistant, and it's probably not going to be Beskar armor. Cortosis is just a really special metal that shows up a lot in the comics, and it's actually listed on the wiki for this episode, so I think a lot of other people are assuming that his armor is made of this. There was also a special Sith blade called a Null Blade that was constructed during the height of Sith power before the fall, before the Rule of Two began. So generally the Sith do have history with this metal. Probably one of the cooler takedowns that he has is when he force pulls one of them onto his blade, skewering two of them at the same time. Very efficient means of getting rid of people. Notice he's also powerful enough to withstand Osha's stun blast. May grabs Kelnaka's lightsaber. Remember, this whole time she's been killing all these different Jedi. She's been trying to grab herself a lightsaber. Probably, my early theory is that she needs it to construct her own Sith lightsaber, but obviously things take a bit of a left turn during the episode. Even early in the episode, you can kind of tell the Chimere is kind of interested in Osha now over May because May tried to betray him. He basically wants to kill May. But when he goes after Osha here and throws his lightsaber at her, I don't think he's actually trying to kill her. I think he's trying to bring Soul out, knowing that Soul would come to protect her. And he really wants to kill Soul. This gets to the idea of him slowly turning Osha, if he can, basically replacing Mei as his new apprentice. During the actual title scene, we get some new theme music, way more ominous, lots more ominous music this week because the title of the episode is Night, so it's thematically much darker. And we get the beginning of the Soul versus Chimere, Jedi versus Sith fight during the episode, which basically lasts for the entire episode, or the rest of the episode. The way that Chimere talks about it too, he makes it sound like he and Soul used to know each other and Soul has just forgotten. Like, how could you forget so quickly? You don't remember me. I sense something familiar. 
My assumption is that Chimir used to be a Jedi Padawan, maybe left the Order, or Sol visited him, denied him entry to the Jedi Order, or more likely, he was there the night of the fire 16 years ago, and that's how he got some of the burns and scars on his arms. Notice now that we can actually see that it's him. You actually see his arms bare. We haven't seen his arms in previous episodes. He has scars all over, like burns all over them. Where would he have gotten those burns but the giant fire that we've seen multiple times in different episodes and will continue to see in future flashbacks? Now, it's not totally clear what his connection to the Coven of Forts Witches is. He would have also been much, much younger during that flashback 16 years ago. But a lot of what he's talking to Soul about, like, what do you really want? He wants to be able to practice the Sith arts, practice the Force the way he wants to, and have an apprentice of his own. But the Jedi would never allow that, because obviously they hate the Sith, and they hate anybody who's not Jedi. So Chimera is saying a lot of the same things that the Coven of Force Witches was saying in the past, too. Just making it sound like he is somehow connected to them, and he was there during those events. He also claims that his helmet is blocking Soul's ability to read his thoughts, so it's probably enhanced with Sith Force powers. Sort of like his Sith version of a Magneto helmet. We get the Jekyll versus May fight. They seem pretty evenly matched based on the amount of training that both have received, because they're both basically Padawan levels. We get a couple early scenes between Yord and Osha. He claims he has no idea who the Sith Master is, doesn't say the word Sith, because remember, a lot of the Jedi just think that he's part of some other sect of non-Jedi Force users. An apprentice who doesn't know their master. Could this be a splinter order? Or something worse? My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. The way they explain that on the show, like the reason why nobody is thinking Sith on the Jedi side of things at this point, before Chimere says it himself later in the episode, is because nobody has actually heard or seen anything of the Sith, no references to them, in over 900 years since the last major Jedi vs. Sith war. So the minute a red lightsaber pops up, that's why people just don't automatically assume Sith. Also supporting my theory that Chimere might have been there with the Force Witches 16 years ago during the tragedy, Yord says he has a way of entering and staying inside your mind, and Osha says, oh, my mother could do that. The Coven of Force Witches that I came from had that ability. Meaning that Chimere might have learned it from them. It's possible he could have learned it from May, but May sounds like she was so young, she didn't learn the techniques of her Force Coven before they were all killed. So the only other way for Chimere to have learned that is if he was there also learning the same lessons that Osha and May were starting to learn too. Jeki and May play a little hot potato with Kelnaka's lightsaber. Chimere comes to save May from Jeki, who taunts May with Jeki's loyalty. Remember, he keeps trying to kill May during the episode, like he's pretty much done with her. There's a couple cool moments, too, where you see him disable Jeki's main lightsaber, but then she ignites Kelnaka's green lightsaber, so she uses two for a little while. Anakin Skywalker would be proud for trying to double-wield. But ultimately, Chimere winds up disabling Kelnaka's lightsaber. Then when Chimere tries to kill Mei, she's actually saved by Jeki and Sol, also supporting my theory that they might flip-flop, and Mei might be the one that goes good by the end of the series, and Osha is the one that goes to the Sith. They tease the force bugs coming back, reacting to the light of the lightsabers coming to the end of the episode, but they wind up paying that off in a way that I didn't expect. Like, I expected them to come for all of them first. But I think when Osha hears the voice of young Mei calling out to her, it's not Mei actually reaching out with the force. It's her just having a premonition, the way that she had the force vision earlier in the series on her own, that she sees bad things happening. So she's like, we need to go back and save them because something really terrible is about to happen. Then Chimere seemingly kills Jeki. It's a cool takedown. Normally you think that's a misdirect, like, oh, she'll find some way to survive this because so many people in this series seem to survive lightsaber stabs. But the fact that he stabbed her so many times all over her body and then so leaves the planet without her body makes it seem like she is permadead. So everybody press F to pay respects to Jeki. Gotta kill off Daphne Keene in time for her to go film some scenes for the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Like, oh, Hugh Jackman's calling me. It's time to film my scene. So you gotta kill me off of this series. Then we also find that Chimere's Sith lightsaber has the ability to separate, making two smaller blades. Handy trick. Now, it's not as big as Darth Maul's double lightsaber. The construction is a little bit different. Like, it's meant to be wielded as a single lightsaber. You can just make two tiny, like, much smaller lightsabers with it. Darth Maul's lightsaber hilt is massive in comparison. The helmet comes off, revealing Chimere. He taunts Mei for not figuring out it was him the whole time. How she's weak, how she didn't have the special sauce that he wanted in a Sith apprentice. This kind of gives you vibes for Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader during Return of the Jedi, where he's like, if it's not going to be you, then maybe your sister will turn. Sister. 
So, you have a twin sister. Just making me feel continually like they wanted to tease that idea by the end of the episode where he finds Osha and makes it seem like he's going to twist her to the dark side. There's a couple important info dumps during the episode too when he's talking about what's going on with the Sith just in general. Chimere claims that he has no name, so Chimere is just a fake name that he's been using as a disguise, like he doesn't have, actually have a real name or a Sith name. So a lot of people were wondering if he was going to wind up being one of the canon versions of the Sith Lords that we know about. It sounds like he's just a brand new character they created for the series. Maybe by the end of the series, he will get his actual Sith name. People have been calling him Darth Hilarious, Smilo Ren, there are all kinds of names you could come up with. But the really important thing is that he does name himself as a Sith. This is the first time on the show that anybody has spoken the word Sith out loud and basically tells him, well, because you've all seen my face now, I have to kill all of you. When he says all he really wants is freedom, like I said earlier in the video, all he wants is freedom to practice the Sith arts in the Force the way that he wants to, obviously the Jedi not going to allow that or allow him to have his own Padawan, an acolyte, which he also says that so he said the name of the thing inside the thing. This will obviously raise a lot more questions than it answers. Like, they answered a couple questions, but the whole idea now is that if he's named himself as a Sith and Soul is alive at the end of the episode, how do they explain him not telling the rest of the Jedi if Soul does not also die in next week's episode? Like, they make it sound like he's going to survive, too. Doing a head count at the end of the episode, all the people who actually know that the Sith are back, Chimere is one of the Sith. You have May, Osha, Soul, and Basil, and Pip. So really the only way to explain how the Jedi Council cannot learn about the Sith is if all of them either wind up dying or keeping the secret themselves for some reason. Also notice when Chimere says to Sol and May, look at you two right back where you started. That's a reference to May falling into the chasm and Sol not being able to save her. I think this confirms that Chimere was there that night. And that's why he knows about this. Maybe he had some influence on events because May didn't look like she was all there upstairs when she was actually lighting the fire. Later in the episode, too, she also makes it sound like she doesn't think that she caused it, even though Osha tells her, like, you're responsible for all this death in the past and in present day, and May makes it sound like she denies all that. Either because someone messed with her memory, possibly Chimere, or something happened and Chimere caused all this. Then Yord saves them, comes into the fight. Notice he uses his bracer to block the lightsaber strike. Like I said, I think most people have decided this is Cortosis. But he seemingly then kills Yord by snapping his neck, R.I.P., and he really does seem dead. We get some hand-to-hand -hand fighting between Yord and Chimere. Osha stops him from killing Chimere, too. He seems like he has the upper hand, like he's the better fighter. But it also kind of seems like Chimere is trying to bait him into trying to kill him. Like he's not trying to die, but he's trying to get Soul to give in to the dark side, give in to the hate inside him. Kill him. Kill him now. Do it. Very Sith-like, just pulling them to the dark side of the Force. And Osha is trying to stop Soul from doing that. Like, no, don't give in to that. She's not trying to save Chimere's life or anything like that. It's not like she cares about Chimere. She just doesn't want Soul to give in to the dark side of the Force. Chimere then blames Soul again for all the bad things that have ever happened to Osha and May going back to 16 years ago with the Force witches. And Osha winds up sacrificing Pip to get the bugs to attack Chimere, keeping him busy. I mean, he'll survive because we see him at the end of the episode, but distract him long enough for them to get away. Conveniently, though, May stuns Sol before he can reveal the truth of what happened 16 years ago, because it does sound like he bears some responsibility for the tragedy. Like there was something that he was not telling her, some lie that he had been keeping up all these years. I believe we'll get the full backstory in some future flashback because there's a bunch of trailer scenes with like the Wookiee Jedi fighting, everybody basically fighting each other with the Force Witches that we have not seen in episodes yet. So it's got to be in some future episode. For everybody that was pissed off that they killed off the Wookiee Jedi without actually seeing him fight the Sith Master in last week's episode, they will give us the Wookiee Jedi fight scene, but I don't know exactly which episode that's going to wind up being. Then we get that Osha and May reunion scene finally, who continues to blame May for the fire 16 years ago. Like I said, they make it seem like both of them have the wrong version of what actually happened, like both believe a lie and they don't know the whole truth. Early theory is that there was just some unseen force there, maybe Chimere related or something that Chimere had something to do with influencing what actually happened. They get into another fight, May winds up knocking her out and then disguising herself as Osha so she can sneak back onto the Jedi ship with Soul presumably to kill him to fulfill her quest of killing the four Jedi that she feels were responsible for what happened 16 years ago. Remember, Soul is still on her kill list that she's going after her kill bill kill list. 
The funny thing about that, though, is that it looks like it's going to be Basil to actually save Soul's life because he sniffs her out like, wait, you don't smell like Osha. Who are you? Also notice that Basil has Pip, like, or the other piece of Pip with him, meaning that when Osha comes back eventually, she'll be able to reform him. Then we see Chimere return to the scene of the crime. He takes his Sith helmet back. Notice that it looks like it's been broken and reforged multiple times, like it's got a ton of battle damage on it. He finds Osha still passed out, wakes her up, and is going to seemingly now try and twist her to the Sith as his new apprentice, his new acolyte, because he said that's really all he wants. What extraordinary beings we are, even in the revelation of our triumph, you see the depth of our despair, I think is meant to be all about what just transpired during the fight. He lost May and his apprentice was betrayed, but potentially has gained Osha, someone who is even better. And because earlier in the episode, they seeded the idea that Sol had lied to Osha about what really happened. Like, what did you do, Sol? What didn't you tell me? Kaimir will probably try and use that to his advantage to twist her to the dark side. We're only about halfway through the season, though, so there's still a lot that can happen in the next couple of episodes. Everybody post all your theories in the comments below. Like, do you think that Osha is going to be the one to go dark and become the acolyte and May will be the one to go good? The obvious next follow-up question to that is who was Chimere's Sith Master? Like, who trained him and who did he kill to become the next Sith Master? They've been trying to introduce a bunch of brand new characters during the events of this series, so I don't think that Chimere is going to wind up being one of the canon Sith Masters or Sith Lords that we know about from the past. Based on the timeline and based on the way they're presenting him as the current Sith Master, he would have had to have just killed the previous Sith Master to become the Master. That means unless they're making a big change to canon, it couldn't have been Darth Tenebris or Darth Plagueis, because Darth Tenebris was the master of Darth Plagueis, who was then the master of Darth Sidious, aka Palpatine. So unless they are changing the timeline, which they did for a key Adamundi in the previous episode, like they changed his birth date, unless they do something like that, that would mean that Darth Tenebris comes after Chimir. Everybody post all your theories about that in the comments below. Like, if it couldn't be Darth Tenebris who was his master, assuming that he hasn't come along yet, who do you think trained him? Like, what do you think that Chimere's backstory is and how he fell in with the Sith? One of the other theories early on tying the Sith master, who we now know as Chimere, to the Force Witches, was that they created these twins, arguably with the use of dark side Force magic, which is a big no-no according to the Jedi. Not necessarily creating Force Jesus like Anakin was, like the midichlorians literally created Anakin whole cloth on their own. It sounds like what the Force Witches did was a little bit different, but not too dissimilar. So it's possible that Chimir learned about these Force techniques, and he is trying to use Mei or Osha to learn more about this. Them introducing the concept of modifying children somehow or creating children using the Force is just way too big for it to go nowhere after the first couple of episodes. Like, they have to follow up on that in some way. One of the other longer-running fan theories is that it has something to do with Darth Plagueis eventually learning that power and then experimenting with it, which Darth Sidious talks about with Anakin Skywalker. The Sith via Chimere and then those that come after him, like Darth Tenebris, Darth Plagueis, eventually learn to influence the midichlorians to create life. But it's all based on stuff that starts during this series and whatever is going on with the Force Witches. It just feels like whatever they were doing there involved the dark side of the Force. If there's any other Easter eggs or references that you spotted in the episode that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. In my full episode 6 video, we'll post next week after they release it. There's a bunch of stuff going on this week. My boys episode five video will post tomorrow after they release it. In my House of the Dragon season two episode three video will post on Sunday after they release that. Everybody click here for all my Acolyte episodes and click here for my House of the Dragon season two episode two video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.